What are you doing? Are you hanging out with me? Okay. What are you doing? Say hi. Yeah, are you having some berries? Did I interrupt your berry eating? Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to show you around our desert chicken coop and talk about what we've experienced and what we're learning and what we've had to do to make sure that they're safe. Right, so this is not our first go around raising chickens. This is actually the third slash fourth set of chickens that we've had over the last, I would say, 12 years, my husband and I together. Um, and so this isn't our first go around, but it is our first go around raising them in the desert. And I was hesitant to embark on this adventure because it honestly was really daunting. My son was asking to get chickens months ago. And for one, I struggled with it because we were still vegan, but two, uh, the desert is kind of crazy. Like we live out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, it's not really nowhere, but we're on one acre lots. All of the lots in this neighborhood are like one acre or more. And we don't have a fence on this property. We're renting this property. And, um, you know, we obviously aren't gonna fence it unless we knew we were gonna buy it or something like that. So we are, we're on an acre that isn't fenced and it literally is like a coyote highway. Everything and anything comes through this highway. I've seen bobcats, coyotes, Harris hawks. We have multiple different types of bunnies which aren't a threat to the chickens, but we have, you know, little little mice and there, of course there's snakes. We live in the desert. There's a variety of snakes, there's scorpions, there's all these different things. And I just thought that it felt too hard to have chickens, but when we decided to leave the vegan lifestyle, you know, I'm pretty hardcore and I decided like that weekend, I was like, well, if we're gonna eat eggs, by golly, then we're gonna have chickens, right? I wanna have my own eggs. And there's a couple reasons for that. If I'm eating eggs, I wanna make sure that I know what the chickens are eating and I want to make sure that they're, you know, humanely raised and taken care of and loved. When you are raising chickens and you're eating the, the eggs from these chickens, like it's unlike anything else. They're so much better for you. You know, you can make sure that they're fed well and they get lots of good snacks and that they're foraging and getting bugs and getting fresh organic produce and that they're not just being fed like crappy soy and corn grain. It really infuriates me when you see packages of eggs in the store and it says vegetarian fed. You know, chickens are scavengers. Like they're related to like the T-Rex or something like that. Like they're not meant to be vegetarians. And it really infuriates me because I'm like chickens, and especially if they're pasture raised and vegetarian fed, that's a load of crock because if they're pasture raised, they're eating bugs. That's the whole reason that you want your chickens to be out on pasture often is because it's a symbiotic relationship. Like if you have a garden and you're dealing with pests, you can let your chickens in and they'll eat those pests. Or if you're dealing with a fly issue, you can let them out in the pasture and they're gonna go along and they're gonna pick out the maggots from that poop. So vegetarian fed, free range pasture raised chickens is just contradictory in itself. So I just dove in and was like, we're gonna eat eggs. We're gonna get chickens again. And literally the next day we brought home chickens. And so we've been scrambling since then to kind of get everything set up. And we've done a lot of research and we've created this pen back here um, that is pretty much predator safe. Uh, there's still a few tweaks we need to make to it. So anyway, getting chickens was a really spontaneous uh, <laughs> thing that we did and we have these four ladies we initially got five and one of them died we didn't we don't know what happened they were still like living in the house and one morning one just like up and killed over it was super traumatic for the boys but at the same time uh, that's part of having animals and it's part of raising chickens and having a farm chickens are actually really um i wouldn't say fragile but they're just really it's just easy for them to die right they're just, they're just they're very smart they're really really intelligent um but it's like they're kind of just easy pickings for things like coyotes and hawks and owls and all of the things that we have here in the desert it's not shocking that one passed that one died we don't know what happened but have to wait for the airplanes to go by 
it's like particularly noisy on the days that I decide I want to film. <clears throat> right, ladies? And now the dog is barking next door. Daisy! No! Can you shush? Now there's another plane. So we now have chicks in our bathtub again. We have four more brand new chicks that we got two weekends ago. And uh, yeah, I haven't been able to take a bath in a couple months and I miss taking baths, but it's been worth it. It'll be worth it. Uh, our baby chicks will join our young ladies behind us uh, once they're old enough. And I can do a video on that too, like just how we're, re how we're introducing them to the flock. Uh, so we'll have a total of eight chickens. We also want to make sure that our chickens don't spend their whole life in this coop. We have plans to fence our garden, and once we have a fenced garden uh, that is established and the plants are big enough, then we'll move the ladies in there and they can forage in there. And in between that, we're going to create a chicken tractor so that we can move them around different areas of the yard where they're safe from predators. Um, they'll still come in at night into our sturdy compound. It literally is like a chicken compound. It's freaking hysterical. Um, but we'll be able to let them out during the day and they can move around and, um, you know, to have more of that pasture free range life that um, is a little harder to come by here in the desert. You know, there are no pastures really in our area, in our neck of the woods. Um, it's just hostile <laughs> open space with everything, with all these pokey plants, every type of pokey plant under the sun you can think of and pokey insects and just everything's pokey. So we uh, want to make sure though that they get to move around and get to explore different areas and that they're not just kept in this pen right next to the house. I mean, they have it pretty good. They've got a pretty sizable pen, but once we have eight chickens in there, uh, you know, they're going to want to get out and run around and we want to honor that. We don't want to keep them like cooped up. It's important that they're able to still kind of free range while being safe because every other place we've lived, we've let our chickens free range on the property and yeah, some of them got killed. Some of them went broody and ended up wandering off and ended up getting killed. But ultimately, you know, they got to live a, a great life with grass and lots of room to run and pasture and gardens and like, you know, they were, they were really happy. So here it's just a little different. And that's why I decided to do this video in the first place so that I could just share with you what we're doing and what's working for us. And I'll take you on the journey as we go along. And if something's not working, then I'll let you know that as well. So without further ado, let's dive into the coop. Here is the coop and we nestled it between the dog kennel and our back patio. And we did this because we didn't want to stick them just kind of out in the open in our yard because our yard is literally a coyote highway. So we did this hoping that it would kind of box them in right from three sides and they're safer. We also dug fencing one to two feet into the ground. The, the ground here is so hard, but we did the best that we could and we figured nothing's gonna dig when it's this close to the house, unless it's something smaller, like a rodent, but we put this plastic gardening mesh around the bottom of the coop to make a protective apron for the moment. We are gonna get an even smaller mesh to protect them from snakes and things like raccoons or possums, which we haven't seen on our property, but they do exist in this area because everything lives in this area. Many people suggest actually digging two feet down under the coop and laying fencing underground and then burying it. But we just felt like with it being so close to the house, we weren't gonna worry about that too much. Also, we bought them like a metal, I call it the mini compound. We bought them a metal nesting box, which is really hard to get into. So if something is nocturnal and it's trying to dig into the kennel at night, the chickens are still gonna be safe. As you can see, we wrapped the entire thing in chicken wire. And like I said, we're going to secure a apron of smaller mesh wire around the bottom of the kennel. We'll, we'll be getting two of those metal nesting boxes and they're gonna be elevated off of the ground right next to each other. You can see that we also put up a sunshade to keep the chickens safe from the scorching heat in the summer. We're coming into fall and winter now, so the temps are lowering and they're not gonna need the shade. But when summer comes around, we're gonna, probably gonna have to move the shade tarp around a bit, along with misters that we will put around the top of the coop. And we may even have to install a small swamp cooler. We've heard people doing that when the summer temps just get way too hot. As you can see, we made a chicken swing just to keep them amused. Chickens are funny and they like to play and it's um, important to keep them entertained so that they don't actually pick on each other. 
Usually smaller flocks won't turn on each other. If you get too many chickens in one space, then they'll start to pick at each other's feathers. But we're not too worried about that because we're not going to have that many chickens as of now. Huh, famous last words, right? This is the metal chicken coop that my husband got. I'll put the links for this in the show notes below so you can check it out yourself. It was reasonably priced and it was just easier than building the coop boxes ourselves and safer. What are you doing, Brownie? We obviously touch them a bunch. The kids come in and hang out with them, play with them. We've been doing that since they were little ones, since we first got you home, huh? This is Luis. Hi, Luis. That's Brownie. And we have Thelma and Louise over there. And that one over there is Twig. That's it guys, thanks so much for watching. We obviously aren't chicken experts, we're learning as we go, but if you have any questions about chickens, raising chickens in the desert, then let us know. I'm happy to um, do more videos on this topic. Thanks for watching, bye.